Hello everybody, greetings once again from Chennai, India. Today I am going to talk about bromhidrosis and the rationale of using deodorants. Details of this can be found in an excellent article in the International Journal of Dermatology, May 2021. Bromhidrosis, a body odor, popularly known as BO to the lay public, is a physiological phenomenon in the human body but it is considered repugnant in certain societies and a person suffering from it is ostracized. This odor predominantly emanates from the axillae, armpit, though other parts of the body may also contribute to it at times. We will confine ourselves only to axillary bromhidrosis. Apocrine glands are largely confined to the axillae and perineum. And they start functioning only around puberty. So essentially, BO starts only from that time. In Homo sapiens, the apocrine glands serve no useful function and can be considered to be vestigial. But in the lower animals, they are labeled as scent glands. And their secretion plays an important role in sexual attraction and as territorial markers, for instance, Rabbits live in colonies. If a rabbit from one colony strays on to another, its apocrine secretion is immediately felt by the other colony and the rabbit is chased out of it. Apocrine secretion is milky, viscid, sterile and odorless when it reaches the surface of the skin. Within an hour or two, odor producing bacteria break down the apocrine secretion to different odoriferous products. The axillary odor is variously described as rancid, acrid, musty, pungent, garlicky and so on, depending on the breakdown products. The axillary skin itself, even in the worst case scenario of BO, looks absolutely normal. Optometric instruments like gas chromatography are available to research workers to detect and quantify body order, but these are very cumbersome and of no practical use. The physicians, 10,000 odd olfactory receptors in the nostrils are still the best guide to detect body order. Race, culture, society and custom may dictate the reaction of individuals to body order. Many chemical compounds in the axillae are responsible for the intensity of BO. The ones with the greatest potency of unpleasant odor are the volatile sulfur compounds with the smell of onion. The other compound emitting an equally bad odor is thioalcohol. All these odoriferous compounds start or begin from an odorless precursor of the apocrine secretion. The bacteria in the axillae absorb these molecules and transform them into odoriferous compounds. The important microbes that are responsible for creating my body odor are Staphylococcus, Corynebacterium and Propionibacterium. Let's now see how these deodorants work. It's a big business in the cosmetic industry. It is expected to generate in the United States of America $6.2 billion in the year 2023. So DOs, as they are popularly known, are products that are applied to the skin for the purpose of reducing the bad odor. This is done mainly by getting rid of the bacteria which cause degradation of substances present in the apocrine sweat. We can also mask the BO by using fragrances, perfumes. There are many compounds that are available to decrease the microbial flora, ethanol, triclosan, benzalkonium, chloride and so on. The most widely used antibacterial is triclosan. Triclosan is a broad spectrum antimicrobial which is not only used in DOs but in a host of other formulations like soaps, shampoos, toothpaste and many others. And since triclosan is used in so many products of our daily usage, environmentalists questioned its safety for the human race. But no ecotoxicological damage has hitherto been reported. 
But even in the very minute amounts present in water bodies, triclosan may prove deleterious to aquatic organisms. Antiperspirants are often incorporated in many DOs since the moisture in sweat can promote multiplication of bacteria. There is a downside to using DOs continuously in the axillae for a long time. Of course, there is a marked decrease in microbial density. But simultaneously, there is a significant increase in microbial diversity. For instance, there may be a disproportionate increase in the presence of actinobacteria, which are capable of propagating the body odor. Whether upsetting the ecological balance in the axilla by overuse of DOs will lead to any other repercussions is not clear at present. So, pharma companies are trying to find an antimicrobial to specifically target the odor producing bacteria rather than using a broad spectrum microbicidal compound like triclosan. To address such concerns, we are now looking at plant products. Essential oils are unique plant extracts. They are composed of terpenes, alcohols, esters and ketones. They have a pleasant fragrance that can mask unpleasant odors and they are also antimicrobials. So these are called green products. Some of the plants are tea tree, rosemary, thyme, lavender and lemongrass. Future research will target the enzymes of the odor producing microbes and not the microbes themselves. For instance, the enzyme acetolactate synthase produced by Staphylococcus epidermidis acting on the apocrine secretion results in the production of short chain fatty acids which are highly malodorous. This enzyme can be inhibited or neutralized by 5-methyl perfurol and thus reduces the body odor without altering the microbial ecology. One group of research workers are trying to replace the existing colony of odor producing microbes with a healthy biome. It did work for a short time for three months but then again the original flora was reconstituted. A practical way of managing BO besides DOs is to wash the armpits two to three times daily with an antibacterial soap. Removing axillary hairs prevent bacteria from colonizing on the hairs. Botox injections decrease sweat and thereby moisture in the axillae. For very severe case of BO, removal of the apocrine glands surgically, there are about 10 glands in each axilla, removing them surgically or destroying them with ND YAG laser may work as it has done in hydrodenitis suppurativa. So, bromidrosis or BO, though not a life threatening condition, can cause negative perceptions in an individual and thus lead to isolation and even suicidal tendencies. Thank you.